Are you going after what you really want or are you simply chasing the dollar amount? Join me and my client, Jessica Zeinstra, for a conversation that will help you conquer your money blocks. In this episode, you're going to learn why the old saying of fake it till you make it will cause more harm than good, why your fears end up being some of your biggest excuses, the difference between conscious debt and unconscious debt, how to shift from needing clients to attracting soul aligned clients, and the three buckets of money shit that stand between you and your ability to create wealth. Jessica is one of the incredible leaders in the 2020 Thought Leader Collective, and she was also an active participant in the activation retreat, and I just absolutely adore her. She helps soul-led service providers start and grow their businesses. She focuses on ensuring your business is in alignment, sustainable, and profitable, all good things. Her obsession is getting massive wealth into the right hands, and her superpower is combining mindset, strategy, and execution. Jessica started her journey building salons, education companies, and a hair care line. She's since gone on to work with some of the biggest names and brands in the hair industry. Jess has written seven training curriculum, produced several online learning platform, platforms, and has been on the cover or featured in over 12 publications like Thrive and InStyle. She's built educational teams in 19 countries and has spoken on stage in 11 countries. Now, after over 15 years in the hair industry and finding too many service providers running their business on coffee and a prayer, she ditches the rule books on how life and business should look and focuses on how you want it to be. Trust me, this conversation is going to transform your money story. Now, whether you're new to the podcast or a loyal thought leader, please take a moment right now to hit pause and download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Please help me get this podcast out to more leaders around the world. And if you want to learn more about how you can become one of the 10 leaders in the 2021 Thought Leader Collective, head to rubyfremon.com forward slash TLC. And if it feels aligned, hit apply and make sure you get that application in. Now, if you have any future episode topic suggestions, you can also text me at 1781-336-0160. And if you just want to say hi or reach out to me or connect with me on social media, reach out. My handle is at I am Ruby. I tend to frequent Twitter and Instagram the most. Now, it is time to shift your money story with Jessica Zeinstra. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back with another special episode as part of this special series where I'm featuring the leaders in the 2020 Thought Leader Collective. Reminder, if you're interested in, in learning more about how you can be one of the leaders in the 2021 Collective, just head to rubyframon.com forward slash TLC. Now this leader, she's a little sassy. She's a little outrageous. She is officially the queen of IG Reels, in my personal and professional opinion. And she's just really fucking incredible at what she does. And she's about to talk to us today about something that hasn't surprisingly been talked about on this podcast that I just realized today. And that is this is where I wish I had one of those song buttons like radio shows have. Then I could insert the song money, 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 money money. Anyways, <laughs> I really need one of those sound button panels. So it's with great excitement and joy that I introduce to you, Jessica Zeinstra. Jess, welcome to today's Thought Leader. Thank you a million times for having me. I'm really, really, really excited. I'm so excited. And I'm even more excited now re after realizing like, I don't, I legitimately truly don't think I've talked about money mindset on this podcast ever. And it's something that I also have had. I, I feel like everyone has had a history with money mindset. Uh, every, 
everybody who makes money and spends money has a history with money mindset. So literally every single person on this planet. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we all have issues with money. (laughs) (laughs) Simply put. (laughs) And and that's okay. It's okay, right? It's totally okay because we're all in the same boat and we all have different stories around our money. We all have different belief systems around our money. We all have different, we've been raised to think different things about money and associate money in different ways. And here we are now as entrepreneurs, leaders, service providers. Holy shit shit just got real. I mean, I know for me, when I first became an entrepreneur, I was like really excited about the fact that I could create as much money as I wanted because it's not a paycheck. You know, it's not like you're capped at a certain number of hours. I felt limitless. And I realized that there's a lot more to it than just that. (laughs) And just like snapping your fingers and poof, money just appears. Right. Like you think, oh, okay. So if I work a lot, I'll make a lot. And it's like, you can work as much as you want. You can work a lot of overtime. You can work tons of hours and still bump into the same shit and not over and over, over and over again, over and over and over again. So why don't we start with your money mindset story? Mine's Mine's a really juicy one. Oh, Mine's kind of like a, I won't, I could go on for a really long time because there's a lot of shit in Mm -hmm. my money mindset story. Um, Let's talk about a little bit of the background and how it impacted you in the entrepreneurial space. Yeah. So I grew up, so my mom is in banking and my dad is an accountant. So I grew up around people talking about money in a very disassociated way. Mm -hmm. So I never felt associated with money and I never felt like I had a firm grasp. Like money was always this kind of ethereal, high in the sky thing. Like it never felt tangible. Mm -hmm. I also grew up in a really affluent community in Boulder, Colorado, Mm -hmm. like very affluent. And it's not that my family didn't have money, However, compared to other people, my perception was that we always had less. Mm -hmm. And my perception was that the popular kids, the kids that people liked, were the kids that had the money. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this to be true. And yet at the time, it was very true for me. Mm -hmm. It was what I thought was real. So I lived my entire life thinking that in order to have friends, I needed to have money. In order to be liked by other people, I needed to wear certain labels, drive a specific car, go and eat at certain places. And I did the best that I could to project this image of false affluence. Mm. And it worked for a while. Mm-hmm. And inevitably, everything that is out of alignment, everything that is inauthentic will eventually catch up to you. And it did to the sum of having over $30,000 in debt on a credit card that my partner at the time had no idea about. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun to open up to him about that Mm -hmm. and go through those challenges together early on in our relationship, which, you know, we, we hit this crossroads where he could have said, you're too much for me. Like Mm -hmm. you have this baggage, figure it out yourself. And instead, thankfully he took the other approach and was like, nope, we'll figure this out together. And he really supported me in my, what I call my like great awakening Mm -hmm. of becoming consciously aware of the thoughts that were driving my actions and the deep, deep, deep beliefs, like those deep seated beliefs that influence the way that you show up Mm. in every single day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think 
it's, it's a really tough conversation to have with anyone um, when we're talking about our money. And I think it's also, it, it's especially hard when we haven't perhaps even cultivated that communication within ourselves about our money. You know, like I remember when I was in debt, I was chipping away at it, but I hated looking at it. Mm -hmm. And there was almost like, uh, I'll just make these payments, but I'm not going to look at anything. So I was never really grounded in what it looked like um, because it's hard to face these things. Nonetheless, talk about it with someone, especially someone that you just entered a relationship with. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, honestly, like that, the, that day when I will never forget that day. Mm -hmm. And to this day that I get really emotional when I think about that day, because mm -hmm. it was one of those moments for me when everything shifted, like mm -hmm. everything, my inner being, the way that I was deciding to show up in life, like everything shifted. And I had a choice on whether or not to allow this other human being to see Mm -hmm. this messy kind of gross that I thought was messy, gross, mm -hmm. disgusting part of me to allow this person, because I had all these layers of perfectionism and in order to be loved by a man, I had to act a certain way. And this certainly wasn't aligned with the way I thought I needed to act, mm -hmm. act in order to receive love. So I had this choice on, do I let him see this mess or do I do something catastrophic and the relationship and figure it out myself. Right. So I, it was a really big moment, mm -hmm. really fucking hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, was that before or after you pivoted your career? It was kind of in the middle. So I had, Let's see, I had dropped out of college to go to hair school. Um, and I met my now partner right in that kind of in between. Mm -hmm. So I was in living in Colorado. I was like, I'm going to move to Minnesota. I'm going to go to hair school at Aveda. It's like Mecca. It's where Aveda was founded. I had these big dreams, big aspirations for a career. Uh, and I was like, I need to get plugged in. So I moved here. And I met him shortly after I moved here. Mm. To Minnesota. So he came on board in this really tumultuous time in my life mm -hmm. when I was making all of these changes, when I was mm -hmm. stepping into a new identity, when I was breaking down old patterns, old way of thinking, and really for the first time in my life, doing the things that I wanted to do. Because previous to moving to Minnesota, I went to college because that's what you do in mm -hmm. order to make good money. Mm -hmm. You need to get a college degree and you need to become a doctor or a lawyer. And I hated it. Mm -hmm. And I was unhappy. I was partying way too much. I was drinking myself into an oblivion. And I woke up one day and was like, fuck this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't do this anymore. Dropped out of college a year before graduation, packed my bags, literally had $30 in my bank account and moved to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, I met Max. Right. And you moved to Minnesota to follow a dream mm -hmm. that was, dare I say, against what you were expected to do. 1,000% <laughs> against, <laughs> one, like 1,000% against what I was expected to do. Yeah. And, you know, as a hairstylist, you pretty much are also then in charge of your own income, right? It's, it's a form of entrepreneurship and you're in the service industry. And how was that navigating that with your money stories? So interesting. I mean, there's always so many layers to it, right? So um, I was approached by two entrepreneurs to help them build out their new dream business in Minneapolis. And I had all these, because of my money stories, I didn't see my own innate value. Mm. And I didn't see 
So they were paying me way too little. The percentage they gave me in the company, I look back now, was minuscule compared to the work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. I just didn't see my own worth and my Mm -hmm. own value because I believed that people who had money Mm -hmm. were innately better than me, Mm -hmm. which is an interesting story to carry because there's always somebody who has more money than you. Mm -hmm. Unless even when you get up into like Bill Gates and, you know, really, really, really wealthy people, Mm -hmm. there's, there's always somebody who's going to have more. Mm -hmm. So it's this never ending struggle, this never ending climb And so I looked at everybody else around me, even people that had significantly less knowledge and significantly less experience than myself. I still saw them as being better, more worthy, elevated Mm -hmm. than me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a, people have different iterations of the worthiness wound around money. Uh, I think it's just like this trap that we all fall into in regards to our worth being attached to the amount of money we make or how we're seen or how significant we feel. Um, And a lot of us don't see our own worth and we judge ourselves based upon how much money we make or how many clients we enroll or how many products we sell, right? Or how busy we are, how many gigs we book, how many trainings we book, how many people sign up for trainings and webinars and all the things and courses, you know, like this is what we base our worth on. But when we do that, we stunt our, our ability to earn more or to feel, in, in my opinion, truly wealthy, which to me is different than, you know, just having a lot of money. It's like understanding what wealth feels like in your system. And so now you support service providers with, um, especially, is it focused on to hairstylists, let, uh, let our audience know exactly what you're doing and who you're supporting now. I support service providers. Generally, they're hair distress, hair stressors, no. hair, <laughs> hair stressors. They have stressors in their life and they do hair. Uh, hairdressers, barbers, massage therapists. So uh, yeah. beauty and hair industry. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of money shit that comes up in the service industry because as service providers there's a lot that we put again like our worth in like I don't feel worthy unless the person I'm serving is really happy with their service or I don't feel worthy unless I am booked back to back or I don't feel worthy you know the, the stories go on and on and on what are some of the biggest money mindset stories that you've come across or the most common ones that you've come across with your clients? I mean what you said hits the nail on the head there's also the one that comes up a lot which can weave into a money story is that the customer is always right mm. so if the customer is unhappy then clearly I must be wrong because they're unhappy and mm-hmm. they're right. So innately I'm wrong. I'm less than I'm bad. Mm-hmm. And you know, that money doesn't grow on trees. You got to work really hard mm-hmm. and long hours to make any significant money that you can't charge more than X amount for your service that, um, in order to raise your prices, you need to hit certain benchmarks in your business first. Mm -hmm. You need more experience to raise your prices. All these things Mm -hmm. that are really just you blocking yourself. And a lot of the times it boils down to a fear, Mm -hmm. the fear of being seen, the fear of What will people think of me when I raise my prices? Mm. The fear of what will my family say? The fear of um, if I make more money, my my friends are going to think differently of me. Mm -hmm. So we have these fears. And because we have these fears, we use them as excuses to not do the thing. Mm -hmm. So like one that I had for a really long time was my partner won't support me. Mm -hmm. My partner doesn't support me in my 
business. And never once ever, never has he ever said anything, done anything that would ever make you think that he doesn't support me. He supports me 1000%. I had a story about putting myself out there in certain ways. So I used him not supporting me as an excuse Mm -hmm. to not step out in a powerful way. Mm. Mm. And I, we knew each other back then Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you were a very different version of yourself. And um, just to paint a picture for our listeners, that was when Jessica and I first really connected with each other, which was before um, the activation retreat in 2019. And you were carrying a lot of stories, but your presence and the way in which you were showing up was like a very watered down, filtered down version of yourself, almost like timid, like walking on eggshells type of energy not wanting to rock the boat. And um, now, uh, you know, when people go and and find you online, they're going to see you're far from that. You're super expressed. um, You're very comfortable in your skin and in your being. And uh, it's very clear that you love what you do and that you're in alignment, uh, you know, and there's, a story that there's multiple stories behind how all of this happened, but I want to focus on that money story because I think a lot of people have, you know, especially people who are our listeners who are in partnerships, they have money stuffs tied into their partnerships. And even for those of you who are not in partnerships, like these money stories can hold you back from actually being your fully expressed self. And I think a lot of times we think about money, our money, money stories prevent us from making money, but in reality, they prevent us from doing so much more, right? They prevent us from really owning our being, from owning our essence, from owning our voice, from being comfortable with what it is that we do, from, from feeling confident, from confidently sharing our gifts, you know, for, from showing up fully. And so um, that is something I know that a lot of our listeners are probably struggling with and may not even know that it relates to money. So I'd love for you to talk on that. I feel like you're like, you're like, I have so much to say about this. <laughs> well, no, it's so true though. Like what you said before about um, wealth mm-hmm. and it's, it's about embodying the feeling of being wealthy mm-hmm. versus the, the amount that you have in your bank account. Like so often people are chasing this ethereal dollar amount. And once I have this dollar amount, Mm -hmm. then my relationship will feel secure. Then I will feel confident enough to allow myself to be seen and be vulnerable. And then I will finally have the confidence to show up and do the things that I really want to do. Mm -hmm. And in actuality, it's the exact opposite of that mm-hmm. because you're never, ever, ever, ever going to have that mm-hmm. until you embody it and feel it first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's get a little NLP on them. It's the uh, have uh, do, uh. versus be <laughs> do have. Mm. It's so <laughs> true though. It's so true though. Cause what like, and I didn't realize that so much of my personal story all boiled down to my money beliefs Mm. and I wasn't showing up. And it's interesting that you say that, um, the energy that I was putting off was like, I was walking on eggshells, walking on eggshells Mm -hmm. because that's literally how I felt. Mm -hmm. That's literally how I felt. I felt like don't rock the boat. Don't piss anyone off. Mm -hmm. Don't make them mad because then they're going to take everything away from you. Mm. You're not going to have the money and having the money is what gives you the validation. Having the money is what gives you the feeling of security. Having the money is what makes people love you. Mm -hmm. So don't lose the money. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting how we allow ourselves get trapped to get trapped in our stories. And, um, we don't always realize what those stories are, you know, until we do, 
until we cannot ignore them anymore or until someone actually points them out for us. Um, so what happens when, like, what do we do for our listeners? What do we do when we recognize a story? Like, oh, here's a story I have around money. Then what? The first thing is just give yourself grace. <laughs> like that's the first thing, acknowledge it and say, wow, that's interesting. Mm. So often people can go down that shame spiral of like, yes, fuck, wow. Like I believe that, that, you know, especially when you first start digging into beliefs around money, money's a yeah. really difficult topic for a lot of people mm. to talk about. It's very shame filled. There's a lot of shame around it, mm -hmm. uh, around the haves and the have nots. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was first, I mean, I could go off on another tangent yeah. about that. I it's just, like there's a lot of shame it. around it because I think there's a lot of meaning that we put to it. Like having a lot of money means that I am this and having, not having a lot of money means that I am this, having a lot of debt means that I am this. It's like what we make it mean about us. And it's, yeah, it, it quite often we can get trapped in the shame and not get out so that we can actually start working on this new awareness that we have, right? You get the awareness and then you are like, shit, I feel shitty about myself. I'm so ashamed of myself. I don't want to face this. And, and then you're not working on anything. And I feel like that's what a lot of, especially um, entrepreneurs do, right? Like you're in the leadership space, whatever it is, you're of service and you realize that you've somehow been getting in your own way money-wise and you realize it and maybe you realize it because you've got big fat bills on your desk uh, that are reflecting it or maybe you realize it because you're not where you want to be or you're not able to pay your mortgage that month or your rent that month or put food on the table or you're stuck on Mr. Noodle's diet for like months you know, and, but you, shaming yourself in those moments of awareness isn't going to be helpful. So I love that you say, give yourself grace. I think that's something that we don't give ourselves enough of. We need more of it. Yeah, we do. Extract the meaning. There is no meaning. There is no good. There is no bad. It just is, you know, who decides what kind of debt is good and what kind of debt is bad. Mm -hmm. We live in a society that tells you uh, student loan debt, good. Mm -hmm. Mortgage, good. Mm -hmm. Car debt, great. Debt to start a business, oh, bad, 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 bad. Mm. Mm. So interesting. It's I've, so I've actually interesting. never thought about that. Yeah, it's true. You know, like debt to buy a new house, that's great. Great. But debt You're to a start, homeowner. Right. But debt to start a business, mm mm. Like how, how could you even think about starting your business on debt? Never. Yeah. So there's like these seemingly good debts, seemingly bad debts, seemingly great debts. But what you're saying is don't put any energy into it. Debt is just debt. It just is what it is. And once you extract the energy from it, the meaning from it, the faster you're able to logically without emotion so emotion free look at it from like a really conscious perspective unbiased and say huh okay this is this is what it is mm -hmm. am i okay with it being what it is or do i want to do something about it right and i get to make that choice like there's i like to say that there's conscious spending and unconscious spending there's mm. conscious debt and there's unconscious debt just like everything in life are you living consciously making intentional choices mm -hmm. or are you blind and just unconsciously eating buying spending showing up in relationships right mm -hmm. and that to me to me, if we were going to put a good and bad label on it, mm -hmm. I would say the unconscious is the bad and the conscious is the good. Right. If we were going to put a good and bad label on it. And I don't necessarily believe in good and bad. So, right. 
It's just the unconscious and the conscious, meaning the stuff you're aware of and the stuff that you're not aware of, the stuff that you're aware um, and, and choosing and the stuff that you are perhaps just running on autopilot with. Totally. Like when you think about starting a business, I mean, there's, there's plenty of things you can do <clears throat> from a conscious perspective that will support you building your business. Mm -hmm. Are you needing to take out, are you starting a brick and mortar? Do you need to take out a loan or look for venture capital? Are you wanting to hire a business coach because you want someone to help guide you? You know, is there a program you want to take about Facebook ads? Like all these things that might in the moment put you into debt mm. and without them, it would take you three times as long to become profitable, mm. which if it takes you three times as long to become profitable, how likely are you to stay in that business? Because a lot of people want that instant gratification. Yeah. If you're mm. in it for a year and things aren't working, you're probably more likely to throw in the towel. Yeah. I, that's something that we see a lot of in our industry, like just in the online space, right? Is like this desire for instant gratification. Uh, one, it's <clears throat> built into social media, <laughs> right? So ding, 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 phone notification, gratified, Bing. like validated, comment, comment I'm loved. Uh, someone followed me. I belong. Like there's just so much of it. Right. And, um, as well as in our businesses, again, it's like someone enrolls for my services or someone buys one of my products or someone signs up for my email list, whatever it is, instant gratification. Um, there's also something you mentioned way earlier about the false affluence that you were portraying. And that's something that I see in the online entrepreneurial space as well. It's the, you know, the old, um, I don't even know, like people always tell you, just focus on how you're make it. And yeah, right. See here at the Thought Leader Collective, we believe in something different. We believe in be it until you are it. There's a difference. So the fake it till you make it model, I feel is the false affluence. And that's what we're seeing a lot of people doing, like posing with the things, look at me, I'm a digital nomad doing all the things. And it's like, no, you're actually doing this to earn the money to do what you want to do. Ta-da. <laughs> like it just, it's so fucked up. And also, and this is something we talked about and I hope it's okay to mention this on the podcast, but about what is this version of success for you then, right? Like yeah. what is this vision of affluence or of wealth to you? Are you just chasing, like you said earlier, um, chasing the dollar amount versus the feeling? I mean, you said this earlier, are you chasing the dollar amount? And I think a lot of people get stuck in chasing this fucking dollar versus like, what is it that you really, really, really want? And I witnessed you go through this yourself in your business, but with that, something even better happened at the end is you're now running a business that actually feels super fucking good and you're attracting super aligned clients with ease and you're, you're not like pushing and everything feels so good because you're no longer chasing that dollar amount. And I know that there's so many of our listeners that are stuck chasing the dollar and stuck chasing instant gratification and perhaps even wearing their false affluent identity to try and make it happen. So what do you have to say to them? The most interesting thing, and I say interesting, I use the word interesting a lot. And <laughs> my husband jokes, he's like, do you really find that interesting or do you find it fucked up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay. So let's the just get real. Is this the, the fucked, fucked up, up thing? thing? The <laughs> fucked up thing that I realized myself mm -hmm. was that the false, identity I was portraying, the mask I was wearing mm -hmm. was actually blocking mm. clients from coming to me. Mm. Tell us more. 
Because <laughs> I feel like so many people are doing this and they're not aware that they're doing this. Well, I would have clients come to me. Sure. Like I was mm-hmm. making money. I was making yeah. good money. I was hustling. Mm-hmm. I had clients come to me that were so not aligned, but I was so focused on making a certain amount that month mm-hmm. that I would take on these clients that just made my stomach twist and turn that I knew weren't aligned, Mm -hmm. that I knew weren't building, um, what I would say integral businesses. Mm -hmm. And yet they were paying me. So I was kind of like, well, you're paying me. So I want that money. Mm -hmm. Because you were chasing a certain dollar amount. Because I was chasing a certain dollar amount because in order to be loved, be, I mean, Generally, when people focus on money, it's because of three things. They want the freedom, Mm. they want the power, Mm -hmm. and they want the belonging that they think money will give them. Mm. Freedom, power, belonging. What are these? The three what? What are we calling these? I don't know. These are like the three. When you think about any of your limiting beliefs, they Mm -hmm. generally can boil down to three different buckets. Mm. Should come three up buckets of shit. Three, <laughs> three buckets of money shit. The three buckets of money shit. I feel I'll like make a freebie a on thing. it. I feel like this needs to be a new freebie. It'll have the a dollar buckets. sign yeah. and the poop emoji. Which bucket of shit are you in? Freedom, power, or belonging? What are you chasing? Or Pick your bucket. Are, you, are you chasing a combination of all three buckets? <laughs> I feel like there's like a poopery commercial or something to be made from that. Maybe. Okay. So we're chasing buckets. Yeah. You're chasing shit buckets. And what was I saying right before that? But we went from focused on making a certain amount. So these listeners, they're focused on making a certain amount. They're chasing yeah. the money. What do we got to say to them? So the people that you are going to bring into your business. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I know people say this and this was the fucked up thing that I realized because I knew I, you hear people say this all the time, like focused on, focus on aligned clients. Mm -hmm. And yet there is the reality of like, well, I need to make money. And I was so focused in this reality of I need to make money and I couldn't see a world. I, I truly believed that if I stopped hustling, Mm -hmm. And I think there's, again, conscious and unconscious Mm -hmm. hustling. I think hustle gets a bad rap. Yes. But I was hustling. Like I was Mm -hmm. full in my masculine, barely sleeping, unconscious, just, you know, bringing on unaligned clients. And I made the terrifying decision to stop, Mm. not sign any more clients, release it all and be okay with not making a dime. Mm -hmm. And that was terrifying. Mm -hmm. I mean, terrifying. And the fucked up thing and the beautiful thing was that in that moment, everything switched. Mm -hmm. The clients, I started showing up in a different way. It was like, I know there was no longer this scarcity of needing. I no longer needed clients. Like Mm -hmm. I was fine. I was good with or without them. And that is the moment that I started attracting clients that light me the fuck up. Mm. And I cut my prices in half. Mm. So it was this like perfect storm. I dropped, I literally slashed my prices by 60%. I didn't renew any client contracts. Like I just let everything trickle off and was like, I'm going to start fresh. And within like three weeks, I had four brand new clients that Mm -hmm. were soul chargingly aligned. Mm -hmm. And it's fucked up because if I would have done it sooner. (laughs) Yeah. And yet it's also really beautiful. And I know that I needed to go through what I went through and experience what I experienced to appreciate and truly deeply understand what it feels like being in an aligned business versus Mm -hmm. an unaligned business. 
I yeah. needed to know that differentiation. Yeah. And I don't think enough people give themselves the time and space to do that, right? Because there is a deconstruction that has to happen. And it's not like a physical deconstruction, but mental, spiritually, emotionally of um, what is it that I'm chasing? Why am I chasing these things? And what is it that I want instead? And so for you, by giving yourself that space to really be in it, to stop with the fake it till you make it, but actually start to embody what it is that you want you become the energetic equal of, of everything that you're bringing into your life, right? And it, it goes back to saying, you know, money is energy. We can make money neutral. We can make everything neutral. We don't have to put a positive or negative charge to anything. But for us to really embody what it is that we want, and I think that's what people miss the mark on, is you're not being what it is that you want. You know, this is not about... um oh, I want to be someone who makes 10K a month. What is it? Someone who makes 10K? How, do, how does a, someone who makes 10K a month act? I'm going to act like that. And it's like, well, wait, why do you want to make 10K a month? And for what reason? Is that really what you want to make? Maybe it's actually less. Maybe it's more. Who knows? But what's the why? And what I saw you do and, and how I saw you transform was I saw you really embody it. Um, I saw you stop walking on eggshells and actually start playing more and start bringing more joy into everything that you're doing, which is uh, magnetic, you know, um, being a diluted version of ourselves is not something that brings people in. Yes. Like you said, you'll attract clients, you'll get work, but things aren't going to feel super aligned. And now there's a, there's a magnetic energy about you because you're really being everything that you teach and preach and um, you're being the fullest expression of what success feels like for you. But you had to do the inner work to redefine all of that, to deconstruct all of that. It's like you said, (laughs) yeah. Well, and it's like you said, so you want the money for what purpose? Mm. Like, is it because you want freedom that you think the money will give you? Is it because you want the power you think the money will give you? Mm -hmm. Or is it because you want that acceptance belonging that you think Mm -hmm. the money will give you? And once you identify which one it is, how do you remove money from the equation and give that to yourself in the here and now? Mm. Because the money is not what's going to give it to you. There's always going to be the next thing. Eliminate money from the equation and give the feeling of power to yourself. Give the feeling of acceptance to yourself. Like I, I feel like a powerful fucking woman. Mm-hmm. I know deeply that I belong to mm-hmm. myself mm-hmm. in my own space, in every space I enter. Mm-hmm. And I've redefined freedom. Mm-hmm. And I know that I have freedom in every moment of my life. It's the freedom to decide what you want to do. And money can't give that to you. Yeah. I love that. And I feel like that needs to be everyone's homework, like a journaling prompt. Which bucket of shit are you chasing? <laughs> Is it the freedom, the power, or the belonging? And then once I identify which bucket or buckets, how can you give that to yourself? I mean, that's a great place for everyone to start deconstructing your money stories. Because until you do that, you will continue to repeat, trust me, (laughs) you will continue to repeat the same shit over and over and over and over again. And that's not really fun. Uh Uh-uh. And in, in like every aspect of your life too. Yeah. Which is super fun. (laughs) AKA annoying. (laughs) AKA really not that fun at all. It's really interesting. Yes. Yeah. It's really interesting and fucked up at the same time. Um, So I, yeah, that's a, that would be, I think that's a really great place for everyone to start. And, um, if you're wanting to work more on 
your money shit, then I would look no further than Jess. Um, so all her links and more are going to be in the show notes. Plus, she's got a really cool free webinar for you that's going to help you build a profitable, profitable, manageable, and aligned service-based business that brings you joy. So that link is also going to be in the show notes. Um, Jess, I'd love for you to share how your experience with Thought Leader Collective has been because it just so much has just in the time that I've known you, like I said, from walking on eggshells to where you are today as like this radiant, magnetic, happy leader, business owner, entrepreneur, who's attracting the most amazing clients. Like that's what everyone wants, you know? And I know because I witnessed you that you put in, you were devoted to yourself to make that happen. And I say that only because I want our listeners to understand, like, I'm not trying to say like, I'm the magic pill, nor is Thought Leader Collective the magic pill. There is the inner work. That's the magic pill. If anyone wants a magic pill, it's being devoted to the inner work. Um, And so I've witnessed you in that space and just been super grateful to have you as a leader in Thought Leader Collective. So I'd love for you to share like what this past year has been like for you. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, where do I even start? It's I, been interesting and fucked up. It's been interesting and fucked up and all sorts of wild. I mean, it has been though. And I think, I feel like what you said was, was pretty perfect. Like there is no, the magic pill is showing it for yourself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there is no, the biggest thing that I've taken away is there is no external magic pill. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, me, we, Mm -hmm. in ourselves are our own magic pill. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I'm gonna get emotional, but sometimes it can be daunting and challenging to go through the process on your own. And that's where I'm eternally grateful because I understand, while I I understand that I needed to do the work myself, Mm -hmm. it was also really nice every single week having people to check in with. Mm -hmm. People that I didn't see in my like normal everyday life. So there wasn't this barrier. There wasn't this mask that was already there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's people that, that, yeah, there just, there wasn't this mask that was already there. Nobody knew me from, from anything. Nobody knew anything about me. So I felt like I could really just show up and immediately dive in head first Mm -hmm. because there were no blocks. There were no walls that I had put up. Um, So it was just really nice because yes, you can absolutely do it on your own. However, it's a lot more fun to do the dirty work <laughs> with a group of people, to dig into your shit buckets with friends. <laughs> dig into, I feel like that needs to be a tagline for something. Dig into your shit buckets with friends. Um, <laughs> That's my next program. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. And it's been amazing to watch all of you just support each other in those ways. And um yeah, it's been such a journey and it's been amazing to witness just your evolution in it. And I'm just so excited for where you're going to go and the people that you're going to support and impact um, because now they get all of you. Whereas before, when you were just living in your stories, they were just getting a little piece of you or a false version of you. Now they're getting all of you. And that's where the real magic is. It's in your potency. It's in your actual, real, true authentic expression. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see, see what evolves next for Jessica. Same. (laughs) The same. Um, Jess, I always ask my guests at the end of an episode, what is one final thought that you want to leave for our listeners? Something that you want them to walk away with? And I knew this question was coming. Mm. 
and I didn't want to think of anything ahead of time. Honestly, I think if I could leave with one nugget or just one thing, one thought bubble mm -hmm. would be to just give yourself grace mm -hmm. and trust. Mm. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Jess, for just sharing your presence, your wisdom, um, your magic with our audience today. I so, so appreciate you. And it's just been such an honor getting to know you over this past year. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love uh, you. I love you. Um, and it, for our listeners, where can they get more of you? And I will be sure to record these links in the show notes. Yeah. Um, I am on Instagram at Jessica Zeinstra. Do you want me to spell it? We'll put that in the show notes. Cause okay. I feel <laughs> that's a tricky one. Um, I'm also on TikTok for as long as TikTok is around yes. at Jessica Zeinstra as well. Um, and my website is jessicazeinstra.com. Yes. And then if you want access to her free webinar, it's her website forward slash business dash, but dash simple. And that will be in the show notes as well. I highly, highly recommend that you sign up for that free webinar so you can help, so you can build a profitable, manageable and aligned service-based business. Thank you, Jess. Thank you to our amazing, incredible listeners for joining us on today's thought leader where we are challenging you to rise up speak up and create a movement if you want to learn more about how you can become one of the 10 leaders in the 2021 thought leader collective just head to rubyframemon.com forward slash t l c and if you dig this episode and this conversation between me and jess please share it with a friend everyone needs a little bit of money mindset wisdom everyone so be sure to share this with a friend and drop a rating and review on iTunes. And if you have any questions for either me or Jessica, please reach out to us on social media. My handle is at I am Ruby and Jess, of course, is at Jessica Zeinstra. Thank you so much. And I will see you here next Monday for a brand new episode.